evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight it's all about gaming and pop culture. We're going to be talking video games, TV shows, and museums. It's all happening right here. But what else have we got coming up on the show? Yeah, Khalid heads down to the Global Prompt Engineering Championship, which is the world's biggest AI prompt challenge, showcasing diverse talent in the fields of art, literature, and coding. And of course, we're giving you your music. The talented singer Alina Bashkina is going to be joining us in the studio, guys. I am proper excited about tonight's show. So we're going to be geeking out. But first of all, what is it exactly that you personally geek out about the most? I have to say at the moment, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty late to the game, but I'm geeking out on Peaky Blinders. I am binging to the max. Thomas Shelby is, is just everything to me right now. So I think Peaky for me, for sure. Definitely. I mean, what don't I geek out about? I love, uh, I love everything pop culture. I love Lord of the Rings. I love video games. I love comic books. I love podcasts. I love going to see exhibitions, art. I'm all over it, and I'm very, very excited for today's show. But I know your husband, Louis, is a bit of a geek himself. Oh, my goodness. You should see our house right now. It's been overrun by figures and comic books. But I am starting to join him because I'm sure you know about X-Men coming back, right? And I am into this right now. It's just, I love it. He's got you hooked. I know. <laughs> he reeled you in. <laughs> he just pulled me right in. So I know we want to talk about this a little bit more. But first, let's find out who our guest co-host is going to be. Hi, Arafat here, co-founder of Middle East Film and Comic Con. Can't wait to be with you guys shortly. Yes, Arafat will be joining us right here on the couch in just a little bit. But first, Khalid heads down to the world's biggest AI prompt challenge. This is the Global Prompt Engineering Championship. Take a look. I'm here at the largest AI prompt challenge in the globe where all the talents from the world has come to this one place to challenge their unique abilities in coding and AI and where we're going to get to see everything that we need to know about the future. Let's go and check it out. Pleasure having you here today with us. Tell us the exciting things that are going on. Great, thank you very much, Khad. Today we're here at the Global Prompt Engineering Challenge. And what we're trying to do here today is to really establish Dubai as an AI center and a place for people to explore and implement AI as use cases as we go forward. What's happening with AI here globally and in the UAE is that we're seeing a lot more applications in our daily lives. So what we're trying to do here today is get it usable, use, usable by people from all walks of life in art, in literature, and in coding. And I think this is part of a bigger plan at the Dubai level called the Dubai Universal AI Plan that wants us to ensure that Dubai becomes the hub for artificial intelligence. Can you tell us a little bit more about the challenge that's been going on since it's the largest one in the world? Great. So this is, like you said, the largest challenge in the world. So we had over thousands of people apply from 100 countries. What we've come to is now 30 people representing 15 countries in these three different sectors, art, literature, and coding. And what you're seeing behind you today is a great way for us to put them on the spot, give them 10 minutes to be able to deliver something that would usually, without generative AI, take much longer. What is AI doing and helping us to code? Coding helps us uh, generating images, helps us and, uh, and um, generating audio. Uh, it's, it's so what? Um, uh, it uh, saves a lot of uh, effort, a lot of, uh, of time, discovering new concepts, uh, blending images uh, in, in, art, in a field like art. Uh, so uh, actually, it's, it's a very exciting experiment, especially today. Uh, it's, um, so uh, the, uh, uh, the, even the questions was very exciting and challenging. Uh, I've been competing in the literature category, which is all about creating uh, content, following the instructions, trying to achieve the goals, but through prompts. Yep. So instead of uh, writing the actual end result, we have to write through the AI by directing it. So I think from all four rounds, the most interesting one that I, that I did was a redemption story of a famous villain. So I took Dracula, and uh, Dracula has now met a girl that he's fallen in love with, and her um, influence over him has caused him to like change his ways. And now all the other vampires want to like take over his kingdom. So he has to learn how to like be strong, but also be good. And so he has all of the voices of the past calling him back into darkness. But he's, you know, he's trying to push forward into the light. Just finished the four rounds of the art challenge. Uh, it was uh, very nerve wracking. <laughs> uh, me personally, I'm not used to prompting that quickly. These are 10 minute lightning rounds and 
Uh, usually I can spend up to like an hour, two hours, sometimes even longer on a particular prompting, uh, prompt engineering exercise, whereas this is, this is much quicker. How has AI helped yourself in uh, you know, doing programs, anything in art? Tell us a little bit more about that. This AI technology has helped me to explore the next boundaries of my experimental drawing process. That's something I'm passionate about. Um, I'm really passionate about thinking of new ways we can communicate design. So when I started using AI technology uh, and we could literally take our ideas and imaginations and bring them to life this quickly, this powerfully, I had to get really deep into it. And here you have it, it's just been announced, the winner for the coding challenge. So of course, you need to learn everything AI and coding, and let's see you next year to win the 1 million dirhams. Thanks for that one, Khaled. Right now, we are very excited. Of course, we are talking about gaming, pop culture, and who better to join us in this conversation than the co-founder of one of the biggest events that happens right here in the UAE. We are talking about the Middle East Film and Comic Con. Please welcome co-founder of the Middle East Film and Comic Con. It's Mr. Arafat Ali Khan. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Faris. I am a big fan of Comic Con. I actually MC at Comic Con. I don't know if you've seen me on That's stage. That's right, I think most recently, right? Definitely, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's always a fantastic weekend. You see so many people so passionate and so happy to be there. You get some of the best people in the UAE all in one place. So. What made you decide that I'm going to bring Comic-Con from San Diego, I'm going to bring it right here to the UAE? Well, it, it started with a bit of a rant <laughs> <laughs> with, my, with my business partner. It was just like, why, isn't, why don't we have a Comic-Con here? It's not right. We're just as passionate as everyone else. And then there was that click where you're like, hold on. We do events. We do marketing. We do PR. Why don't we do something for ourselves? You know, And that was the, the, the start of, of the idea. And I, I remember when it really sort of that fire really lit. We'd gone to an expo, I don't remember some show here. And it was, you know, a lot of suits and stuff like that, you know, nothing too much fun, no cosplayers or anything like that. And at the very end of that place, on this tiny little table, there were two uh, Emirati girls just doing that. And I was like, what's this? You know, that seems out of place. So I went to, to see and they were sketching and they had these books on the table and I was like, oh, can I have a look? And there was this wonderful manga book and I was like, oh, uh, did you do this? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, where can I buy this? This is amazing. This is international quality manga. Like, oh no, you know, we just did it for some friends and family. This is just my hobby. That's when I realized and the team realized that there's just so much talent, creativity, and just people wanting to explode with, you know, happiness, I think, um, that's just waiting with no outlet. And that's when sort of Comic-Con really said, okay, we have to do this. Yeah, I mean, Arafat, you, you speak so passionately about it, and I, and I absolutely love it. I, I mean, pop culture means so much to so many people who grew up here. Why do you think that is specifically? Is it because we haven't been exposed as much to, to the other countries, to the, to the Western side of the world? Um, potentially the opposite okay. as well, because I've been here since the early 80s as well. And we had two channels to watch, you know, uh, television, English and Arabic. And I still remember watching the Arabic more, even I didn't speak Arabic, because they had the most wonderful, classic anime dubbed into Arabic. Even the songs were sung in Arabic. Shout out and to Space Tune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this was even before Space Tune. Wow. Yeah. You know, it was, I think it was done in Egypt. And we just, I think we just grew up with it. And it just became part of the culture. We adopted it as our own because that's what we saw as kids. You know, and I think that's why you see so many, you know, if there are artists, or writers or any sort of creator from this part of the world, there is that manga or anime influence and they'll definitely have heard of Grandizer or Jomgar or you know some of those classics, Captain Majid from back then. And I think that's what it's all about. It's all there, you know, we, in this part of the world, I think we love as passionately as anywhere else, maybe more so, you know, and, and pop culture, I think it, it, it evens the playing field. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no difference between uh, a fan 
in the US or, or, or Europe or you know anywhere else that's had Comic Cons before than here. And you know, some of the artists and some of the guests that we've had, they mirror this. They said, wow, your fans are so passionate. You know, they're like, yeah, that's what we want to show the world. Yeah. Speaking of artists that have come to Middle East Film and Comic Con, you've had some big names, right? But you also have, other than the celebrities that we see on screen, you also have the voiceover artists that aren't as popular, but except for the major fans. Who do you think are the biggest um, pull when it comes to getting more of a crowd? Is it the, the artists, the comic uh, writers? Would that's, you know? That's a, a really good question because we struggled with that for years as well, because what do people like? You have to tell us what you like. And the new owners of Middle East Film and Comic Con in former exhibitions, they've been doing a great job, I feel, at speaking with the fans and asking them what they want. So if you saw the, the latest edition uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, um, a few months ago, there were a lot of anime and manga stars there. They had Oscar Isaac also and some other great names but they had you know they had stars from the new One Piece show on Netflix. Inyaki. Yeah they had voice actors and actresses so I think the fans are speaking I mean of course people want to see Oscar Isaac everyone wants to see Oscar Isaac right but I really believe that that, you know, that voice is coming through and that's why I feel there was that skew this year because they're listening more to the fans what they want and I was there and the lines you know, were insane for you know, this actor who's known for this one show, that's how they, they knew him and it was spectacular to see. It was a sea of people. It was wonderful. I mean, we do love uh, Middle East Film and Comic Con for the celebrities, and uh, we also love it for the collectibles as well. Now, I feel like a lot of people don't realize this. This sort of pop culture when it comes to sort of the superheroes, the anime, the manga, it's only expanding because I think it started in the 80s, 90s. Those people have grown up, they have money now, <laughs> and they're teaching their kids to love it as well. So it's That's actually right. a huge collectibles industry, and I see you have a couple of comic books with you. Can you talk us through them? I mean, it's really interesting, and thank you for bringing this up. Um, what people don't realize is that collectibles, especially comics actually, and in uh, more recent years, trading cards, uh, games, old games, can you imagine, really hold and build their value. So, you know, if you're looking to invest in something for the future, and you're a geek, this actually makes so much sense. So this is uh, a, a giant size X-Men um, number one, which introduces from 1975, I believe, and it introduced a lot of new new characters as well. And it's not a it's, it's a, it's a decent grade, but it's not a very special grade. It's only sort of valued at about two to four thousand dollars, what somebody's willing to pay for it. Um, I think I should put it down. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the fact that things are going so strong when it comes to collectibles as well is shown in the fact that one of the biggest um, collectible grading companies, you know, um, this is one of their books, CGC. Uh, they're from a company called Certified Collectibles Group, CCG. They are looking to set up a presence in the Middle East, in Dubai this year. So this just goes to show you how much growth we're seeing when it comes to the collectible market. Not just comics, but trading cards, video games, VHS tapes, Blu-rays, um, toys as well. Funkos are, have been going crazy. They're stabilizing a little bit, but it can be a serious investment. People make livings I out of trading and buying. I should have not thrown away my VHA, oh, VHS no. tape. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Of course, Paris doesn't even know what that is, right? <laughs> oh, you do? I'm, I'm 31. Okay. <laughs> I know you're getting very passionate about what we're talking about right now, but hang on, we will talk about it a little bit more later on. But coming up, we are talking immersive exhibitions with the creative director of the Museum of the Future. So stay right here with us.